I asked for water and the bartender sprayed me with the gun. I'll give him zero stars if I could. Ruined my suede jacket. <laughs> Jeff London, DJ Jason Smith. Here come the pain. When the sun goes down, the music turns up. A whole new world opens up behind the velvet rope. Join us as we take you behind the scenes of the nightlife world. DJ Jason Smith, Jeff London. I'm the promoter, he's the DJ Podcast, live from Boston, Massachusetts. (laughs) Jeff London, hello, sir. Episode 24, Rocks, Paper, Scissors. One, two, three, shoot. Ooh, one, two, three, shoot. Oh, I, like dude, I knew you were going to do it again, dude. I knew you were going to do a scissor. <laughs> you like scissoring. I don't know what that means. What's up? Chilling, dude. A little tired. Just like crazy, but in a good way. I'm not complaining. No complaining. I just, you know, it's like uh, I, I had a conversation with uh, one of our friends, Danger Zone, the other day. Shout out Danger Zone. And I came up with the theory that... I worked my entire adult life to get acclimated to being able to what I do. It's like going to the gym for like 20 years, taking a year off, and then not just getting on the treadmill and like going from 1 to 10. It's like the treadmill is already on 10, and you're trying to jump on that treadmill as it's moving to catch up. Great analogy. And Who came up with that? You were danger zone. I did that on my own, sir. Oh, nice job. Yeah, I'm going to give myself credit one time. So... It's just like So have you falling off the treadmill? <laughs> I'm falling I'm starting to fall off the treadmill. <laughs> and it's just so exciting to be back, even though still you know it's not newly back, but it's like I'm just give I, I mentally like we spoke about this before, mentally I'm like in a really great spot and it's reflecting in my work. But I'm giving so much and I'm giving so much almost i i'm almost like at six days a night right now wow. that's a lot six days a week yeah, yeah. six days yeah night see I'm, I'm losing it bro but it's a lot dude and it's just like i've been giving it my all my body's like yo bro my mind you know mental state is like get it takes a beating on you dude yeah, it does and i want to be able to give everybody that comes to my shows everything that i have because it wouldn't be fair you know what right, i mean right yeah, I'm doing five a week now, and it's it's tiring. I woke up this morning, and I, I didn't have a drink last night, but I was just exhausted. I, for the past three days, have had a feeling like I've been hungover without having an actual hangover. I know exactly the feeling. It's just a tired, like, beat-down yep. feeling that I've been having. Not it's like, you know, it's just a lot, dude. It is. But it's exciting, too. I can't say no to anything. Not right now. I feel like everything is so important. Like uh, one of our friends, Alex, hit me up to do a, a private event the other night. And I was coming back from New York. And I was just like, uh, maybe I could make it. Maybe I can make it. Right. after I, I, As I'm exhausted in the car just from traveling back right. from New York. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, man. And then that, that anxiety starts getting oh, well, what happens if this other kid does it and I lose my spot? Yep, yep. You know what I mean? It's just that hustle, the, especially and when the FOMO. It's like the FOMO of losing out, the FOMO of missing, yeah, and it's the not FOMO even, of the artist. I'm an there. artist myself, so I don't have – some kids, are, it's, it's cool with it, but I, unfortunately I, I, I don't come from a, 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 f- a financial safety net from my family or myself. I've right. been just grinding for years. Right. And, you know, unfortunately, due to COVID, I lost a lot of my financial net that I had there. It wasn't much, but it was something. And now I'm feeling like I can't say no to anything. Right, right. You, don't you know what I mean? Because then point. what happens if this kid comes in and plays that gig and then the guys that hear him are like, yo, let's do this or let's go on tour. And I lost out on that right. because I was. But how can I give it my all? 
to that to that party if I was Exhausted. not feeling it yeah. anyways. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, you would you could have potentially been the opposite. You lost out on gigs because you suck yeah. bad or you're exhausted. Yeah, man. So that's what's been going on with me. And Jeff, you've been killing it. I'm very proud of you, bro. Appreciate it. So we get some questions of the week. Cool. Are you ready? Yeah, I like this first one. This can be a short answer or a long answer. This one, first one. Kanye or Drake album coming out first? Uh, I think Kanye's going to drop first. You, I think because it's there. Right. But Drake's album is probably there too. I bet you it's just sitting there. Do you think that he's going to get the inside word? When Kanye's going to drop? And he's going to do it like an hour later. No, I don't think he's going to do that. Or maybe because they got that little beef going on. All that beef is just to hype up the album. I know, album, and right? it's for both of them, which is pretty cool. But at the same time, Kanye doesn't want to bring that heat to, to, to Drake. Kanye can't be in that battling situation. He's a hip-hop dude, but he, you can't, he can't have beef. He doesn't know how to play right. Right. Like, when he put his address up the other yeah, day, like, he doesn't know Drake how to play right. It like off, Kanye yeah. is like, he's not a battle MC kind of dude. Like Jadakiss is like, you don't want to fuck with Jadakiss. Like no. he'll tear you up. Drake and Meek had beef, right? Yeah. Drake, dis- I'm sorry, I love Meek Mill, but he right. can- oh, Drake knew that. it. Yeah. Drake stopped as soon as he had he. Like Drake, I mean, I'm sorry, Meek like threw a couple jabs out and just Drake came out, knocked him out, yeah. and then that beef immediately stopped. I think uh, Meek had one rebuttal record, and that was it. That was it. It yeah. was just because it didn't even pop, dude. No, but yeah. I like the beef. I like beef within hip hop. I think it's great for the culture. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's from the cre. It started in the streets. It's it's always been. Somewhat friendly beef, and it's it's good for the culture. It keeps people progressing. Oh, I like it. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it, then you know the only thing that wasn't great for the culture beef wise was the West Coast East Coast thing because that was more on a personal level than it was like a real battle. You know that that's the only thing that kind of sucked for our culture as far as so, beefing goes. So give me final answer. One word, Kanye. Wait, but speaking on that, did you see that they're the the thing that I, I the internet's down, so I can't look it up. But they're they were launching Kanye's the, launching the stems. I saw that, so everybody could recreate remixes and that's stuff. Right. I think that's tell amazing. people what stems are that don't know. Oh, stems are like the specific like if there's a horn, it's just an isolated part of the song that's like just the horn, or you'll have like the drums where it's just, just the drums. But the drums could be broken down to snare kick, all those right, uh, right. percussion progress up. Uh, per, sorry, percussion spots. You know what I mean? But like if there's a guitar in there, you could just isolate the guitar. You could just isolate the vocals. So you could create whatever you want. So for any remixer, that's all you need is stems. Yeah, yeah. So for instance, when I do remixes, I get artists. They don't just send me their song with like an instrumental and acapella. They send me the, the stems, the piano, the drums, bass guitar right. and i could ch- pick and choose what i want or i could just take the vocal and just go in a totally opposite direction right, right, right. you know what i mean so i've done that before too so that's a pretty cool thing it's pretty amazing and you know what that's really smart because that gives your album like legs oh yeah absolutely because everybody's gonna want to do a remix with those stems and be like yo listen to this and that's one other two more people that will hear a kanye song tbt do you remember when uh was it? Oh shit! The internet just came on. Cool. Was it when Danger Mouse? Uh, Danger Mouse. Did, yeah. Was it Danger Mouse? He did the gray album. The gray album. He mixed the black and the white album, the Beatles white album, and the uh, Jay Z black album. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was so dope. That was. Oh, actually, uh, speaking on that too, I was performing. We were at the Roxy, but it's when I was on tour with Swayze and uh, Cisco Adler, and for some reason. Uh, Jizza showed up and he was in the green room and we we're talking and he's such a great guy. I mean Rizza, Rizza, I'm sorry. Rizza came in the dressing room, such a nice dude. And I at that time they just some dude just made the Beatles uh Wu Tang 
mashup album. Oh, I know. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. And I put him on to it, and he was like, oh, shit, that's crazy. He didn't even know about it. Really? Dude. Yeah, it was dope. I, I, I'm wearing a Wu-Tang shirt today, by the way. Oh, shit, that's right. Wow. I, I found another one that's pretty dope, because everybody knows I'm a little hippie dude. Yeah. I found an MF Doom Grateful Dead mashup. Really? Like, little EP. Yeah, it's pretty sick, man. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, second question. We get two. A double question today. Sick. Shout out to my boy, Kelvin. He always comes up with the great stuff. What will become more mainstream first, the VR experience or crypto being accepted? And I know that crypto is already being accepted, like places like 11 in Miami, they yeah. do Bitcoin and things like that. What do you think VR experience, meaning the, the VR goggles where people, no matter where you look, you feel like you're in the room hear the sounds of the dj just adds another element to the to the to experience the experience yeah. yeah i think that's great that's a little niche that i think would be like in a tourist place right as far as real nightlife goes i don't see a vr experience really happening mm-hmm. it's almost like a silent disco right yeah for granted silent disco is kind of dope i used to dj at this place in long island and they had a noise ordinance Oh, wow. At 10 o'clock, they had to shut the music down. So at 10 o'clock, the D, like I would stop playing at 10 o'clock and they would bring in another DJ that would play silent disco. That's pretty cool. So everybody's still dancing, but right. nobody, can, there's no loud music. I've seen silent discos where they have two or three different DJs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You put your different channel on your, on your headphones. Yeah, to hear each DJ. So, Actually, so uh, somebody's dancing and you just see them all like dancing. Oh, yeah, like, they're just so, dancing like, to Hardcore shit. And, and then somebody be dancing to like a slow jam. It's so amazing. And that's been around for a while now. I remember oh, being yeah, at one yeah. of the first that's Bonnaroos cool. and they had silent disco party. Awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. I did a. There's this place in Brooklyn called The Well, and I went over there to see Action Bronson. And after the Action Bronson thing, they did uh, the silent disco. It's that's fun. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'd say crypto being accepted because that's more accessible right now. The VR yeah. experience is dope, but that's something like you'd go to like Times Square to yeah. like. Right, right. It would almost have to be like a ticketed thing. The only, the only thing I think that VR could be coming more mainstream is because of the pandemic. Of course, and I people accessing it from outside of, for example, you ha- you almost do like a pay per view kind of thing where you where you pay for yeah yeah you have your own VR glasses you pay for it and it's Tiesto DJing just for you yeah something it, like that where it'd be home like you wouldn't be at the club I've seen stuff yeah. like that already like with uh-huh. the three D. Not the 3D, the VR. Yeah, they yeah. set up the bubble camera that has 360 view around. Yeah, yeah. But there's like bands on tour right now, like you know, back to my hippie shit, Grateful Dead and and Fish. A lot of my friends go on the tours for the summer, and they only did like the little East Coast run of a couple of shows. But the rest of the shows they do, it's called Couch Tour. Oh no way! Because they they watch the stream live. That's pretty. So cool. that's basically almost the same thing without the VR experience. Right, but right. That would be that will be next as far as sitting at home. You can't make it to a concert, but you put your VR gla- goggles sitting on. Sitting first row, and it's going to be more accessible too. Is, is VR is kind of new right now? The technology is so the 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 more advanced it gets, the more accessible because it'll be cheaper. Right, right now, right. it's kind of expensive. I think they're like three five hundred dollars. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. The more time goes on, the cheaper they're. It's like when the new LED t- TV comes out; it's like five grand, and then like two years later, it's like a thousand bucks. You know right, what I mean? Right, so, yeah. so, yeah, man, I, that's great questions. I awesome, thanks for the questions, y'all. Yeah. Appreciate y'all, man. And you can send your questions in. Uh, you can find us on on the promoter. He's a DJ. Instagram, that's it. Gmail, whatever it is. Yeah, we get us on our own IG, man. Sorry, my voice is a little messed up. I, my my sinuses are killing me. I have some allergies going on. <laughs> Some mold allergies. Mold. <laughs> it's been a little too uh, humid for me. My, my 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 sinuses don't like that too Stinky much. hippie. Stinky hippie. Cool, man. Know what time it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get on yo. I'm going to get on yo. I'm going to get on yo. In the minute and review this piece of shit, place, 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 place. I mean... I, I know we do this every week, but that is such... I can't believe how good of an intro that is. I know. You're unbelievable. Jeff. 
Yes. It's time for that Yelp review. Well, Isabella H. says, rude and completely inhospitable. I asked the bathroom attendant to charge my phone, and he says $5. What? <laughs> Come on, man. I would never ask anybody to charge my phone. Why not? Nah, dog. You ain't touching my phone, especially in the bathroom. That shit is dirty. Well, people need their phone to get Ubers and stuff. I'd go somewhere else. Okay, sorry. I just, I, I mean. But these bathroom just, tenants got to make money, you know? They No, he's completely right by saying five bucks. I would have said the same thing. Yeah. You want a song request? Two fifty, <laughs> not $2.50. I didn't have cash on me. I was an outraged millennial after he said that because no one carries cash in this digital age. The club was great. However, it was difficult to maintain the positivity after the bathroom attendant refused oh my God. to let me cha- charge my phone. As an outraged drunk woman, what do I <laughs> what, what do I verbally abuse him and told the truth that he is a greedy bastard? He tries to get me to listen to what he has to say by reaching for my arm to manhandle me. I escaped him so fast as possible for an intoxicated skinny woman. As I asked some blonde white girl who works in, she said she didn't have a, a USB and quickly walked away. Club was good, but I don't owe you $5 to get a charge on my phone. That's completely absurd. As a new club, I would think they have some sense it's a digital age, so outlets should be accessible on table walls or even a charging station. Let's get with the times, people. Oh, my God. Wow. So you're going to let this experience it ruin the whole... She loved the club, loved the, she, everything. She except gave them one star because of this bathroom guy attendant. Who works upon tips. Yes, correct. Wouldn't charge her phone for free. Imagine your Yelp review going down because the girl said the club was good. But <laughs> she didn't want to get charged $5. Now that is absurd. Well, some clubs have those charging stations where you put it in a box. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's been nice. around forever. That's not around. But it's not. That's so that's ridiculous. So ridiculous. That's some, like, Karen shit right there. <laughs> that is some Karen shit right mm-hmm. there. Isabella what? H, a.k.a. Karen. Karen. Amanda W had to say what? My husband Bernard went there. Sick name, by the way. And said a dancer here smashed her buttocks on his legs <laughs> way too hard and gave him muscle pain. No. Not a nice way to treat paying customers. He came to view nice dance moves in the show, not a brutal swift kick to the leg. Please be kind to the gentlemen who come to watch y'all dance and wear some longer shorts, please. I don't want you, you all to chafe from the pole. Baby powder is your friend. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. They were definitely at a strip club. Thanks. You think so? I think so. And all the girls so. did was twerk. Oh, because you know where the place was reviewed. Oh, you're gonna start reviewing like strip clubs. This That'd was a this sweet. was a dance club slash strip club similar to like this isn't Eleven Miami, but it's a similar concept. Oh, it's like oh, okay, okay. It's almost like a bikini bar like kind yeah, of yeah, situation. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. my god, that's amazing. Yeah. When I lived in New York, they used to be like bikini bars, and they were so weird, bro. Oh yeah, it's sketchy, dude. Dude, you walk in and then there's like the girls are all wearing bar- bikinis and like they only could dance behind the bar and it was just so and it was always like super dark and like and I, I never guys went there were, like to go out there would it just be like yo lying. let's check this place out you liar. know what I mean like liar no it was fact liar. yo it's so funny all right we got one more all right go this one sounds amazing Tom B says. One star review. Tom Brady. (laughs) Imagine if it was Tom Brady. I asked for water and the bartender sprayed me with the gun. I'll give him zero stars if I could. Ruined my suede jacket. (laughs) 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 He took out the the soda gun and just sprayed the dude. That's awesome. That's fucking awesome. Tom B must have pissed that bartender off. Totally. I want some water and he's like, here's some water. (laughs) That's pretty funny. That's pretty awesome. Good ones, Jeff. Oh, thank you. I love my Yelp reviews. I love your Yelp reviews, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go with this. We haven't had... Oops. Ah! Shit, man. Take a week off now. I don't know how to use your Gather around, kids. It's story time with Uncle Jeff. The names have been left out to protect the guilty. Now, here's a little story I got to tell. 
Jeff, you know what time it is. Story time. All right. Story time. What's this one? This one just happened. Just happened. Just happened. Oh, sweet. Am I part of this story? No. Oh. Okay, go ahead. But you know the story. I but know you don't, the story. But you don't know the back story. So you're going to learn this firsthand. Cool. I like that. So as many as you, of you know, or hope know, we had one of the biggest artists a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The night before, his DJ hits up the owner of Big Night and says he wants to do a party. He's, he's, he's close by uh, in New York. This is so funny because you and I had this conversation about 2 a.m. talk. Yeah. And it happened to me the other day. So If you don't know what 2 a.m. talk is, it's like when you say you're going to do all this stuff the next day and you don't absolutely do anything. It's like those great ideas of, dude, we're going to wake up at 11, we're going to go to brunch, and then we're going to go on the boat. The it next never, day you come yeah, around, you're yeah, like, hungover and like, like, no way, dude. Yeah, yeah. Not happening. So I think this was his 2 a.m. Yeah, this is, so the party gets set up. Party sells out instantly. One of the biggest guys in hip hop I mean we had a 24 hour notice not even well, 22 yeah well 12, 12 hours 12 hours to get the party started anyways so he's coming from New York and the long part of the story is he showed up extremely late but when he showed up extremely late he crushed it now I know the reason why he showed up extremely late Oh, okay. So it's not. I had an assumption of why. Yes, this is not an assumption. So he. Okay. Needs, all right. Some of the things in his rider, a certain kind of sprinter van from New York to Boston. There's a lot of logistics that go into that back tons end. Yeah. Tons of logistics. The first sprinter van pulls up, blaring this guy's song. Yeah, yeah. This guy gets so. No. Really? Like, looks out from the studio, hears his own song playing, and is like, absolutely no way am I going with this guy. Like, like. Oh, I can understand because, why a little bit, because the guy's I'm, like a fanboy almost, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Imagine riding like five hours. Well, I want to yeah. be with a professional, not some guy that's on my dick. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, the first Sprinter van, he's like, no way, I'm not going in it. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's amazing. We have to get a second Sprinter van. Second sprinter van shows up, and like an hour later, oh, still we have a damn. lot of time, not up to his standards. Well, that's understandable. The third sprinter van comes. Three, three. He gets in it. Now we're he's in the van. We're, now we're like three hours behind. Yeah, we're yeah. we're running super late right now. We're running late. So, on the phone with the with them. Yo, you got to put it full blast. Don't get speeding tickets, whatever. Just speed here. Well, Sprinter Van can only go so, so <laughs> yeah, fast. It's like, so, I mean, yeah. He has a, enough time. If he hits traffic in Connecticut, he hits yeah. one little roadblock, we're, we're done. And the people are just waiting for him and waiting for him and waiting for him. So the artist still obviously wants to make the party and everything like that. Obviously, yeah. So yeah. they come up with this idea in around Connecticut. Or Rhode Island, I forget which one. Uh huh. But we're like right on time. That he's gonna have an SUV meet him on the side of the highway. Yeah. Jump out of the sprinter van. Okay. Get into the SUV and have the SUV just like haul like at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> and all and the rest of his boys are gonna come in the later. Later. So he's gonna have a security in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they came up with this mile marker. So this SUV pulls up well, to the mile This is marker. amazing, dude. Yeah. They pull over on the side of the highway. The artist jumps out, jumps into the SUV. They go, oh, The hunt. fact that he was down to do that is yeah, pretty yeah. amazing. Jumps in there. Oh, they haul him. We're like, keep me updated, like, updated, updated. He, we have a, um, I just probably, well, everybody probably knows, but there's a, obviously he doesn't go through the front entrance of the club, so the back entrance. And yeah, 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 yeah. Security there, they lift up the gates and everything. They jump out of that. They full on sprint and get in the elevator, get on the mic, performs, kills it. But if he did not get that, 
car on the highway. It would have never happened. We would have had a riot. And wow. now we know the backstory. That's amazing. Oh, why he was late. Wow, that was dope, dude. That's a good story, man. That's some inside shit right there. Super intense. Wow, what a well-played gentleman to get in that SUV to do that. Why didn't we just give him a police escort? <laughs> I'm thinking just call up and say, can I have a police <laughs> escort? I think we got enough pull for that. Maybe. Maybe if it was Tom Brady. I mean, yeah, Tom Brady probably always has a police escort. Yeah. Uh-oh. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Direct from our studios here in Boston, Jeff London with the breaking news. The PNN, the Positive News Network. So we got to give a shout out, actually. Yeah, shout out. And it's uh, from a local artist who is, we might have talked about on the show before, but Bia. Uh, Bia's been a friend for yeah, you were telling a long, yeah, long yeah, yeah. time, and it's been so awesome to her see. Her new record's dope. To see her grow and, and uh, her whole management team and Ollie and Bruno, all those guys. So the story is, Bia's whole lot of money causes store to run out of heels. So her, her lyric is, I put on my jewelry just to go to the bodega, and I keep it with me just so that I'm feeling safer. Fendi on my body, but my feet in bodega. So yeah, the story is that the bodega high-end clothing line uh-huh. are sold out of the heels Wow, that's pretty that's Because pretty of her lyric in the song. Wow. So she went to the bodega, and the, the, the clerk, she tweeted this out, that the clerk uh, said that they're sold out because of the song. And it just goes to show how it's such a good problem, and that just goes to show the influence of a, of, a, of a like a hit song can be. Not only that, but it shows you how influential she is as an artist, because that means cool. that, like, People are paying attention to her. Yeah. Well, her remix, with, uh, she has uh, Nicki Minaj on the remix. Yeah, yeah. I, I played that record. The yeah. whole lot of love one, right? A whole lot, whole of, lot money. of money. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of uh So I just think Led it's so Zeppelin. awesome, uh, A, that she has such an influence on thing. B, it's yeah, so positive because B is just on top right now. She's going on tour with Don Tolliver right now. Um, yeah, that's That's going to be tour. a dope tour. Um, it's coming in Boston, actually, Monday, October 4th. House of Blues. Maybe after party, maybe after party. Yeah, man. Maybe, maybe. But is I it at House Blues? It is. Oh, okay. So real close. So why we're shout out to Bia? That's amazing. Speaking on PNN, a couple our last show we spoke. I think it was the last one, right? We talked about Aaliyah. Yeah, yeah. So they had that. The, yeah. So they released it. Her first album. I don't remember what album it was. One in a million. One in a million, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm having like super brain farts. But it's like on its way to be like Aaliyah's like first number one like really yeah like her numbers are charting so crazy that she's like like she's starting to chart again like that's pretty amazing yeah not break records but she's chart to know that an artist from that decade is charting again she's like it's almost like a new artist well we've talked about this before I mean the influence of that 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 guy that was doing the ocean spray commercial. That yeah, had, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, how that song charted again. Yeah. So it's, it's so crazy. One of our guys, Scott, he's he's really intelligent around here when it comes to music and stuff. We're going to an event where we're talking about something, and it's like, oh, because you and I had an idea about a party, and somebody said that it might not work because those people are a certain age, and they would never come out. And my rebuttal to that, to this gentleman, Scott, was... It doesn't matter anymore because if they know one song, see back in the day, if, if I bought an album and I was like, this is really good. I wouldn't have any other suggestions until I told you or somebody else, right. Hey, I just bought this album. It's really good. And then you would be like, yo, Oh, if you like that, you should go check this out. Right. That's how you fall down. That's how you used to fall down the rabbit hole. Right. So it was like, always like, you know, it would take forever for you to find something that's kind of like that. Now, you like an Aaliyah song, you go, or like you like, um, 
whatever, like a Bia song or I don't know, some a weekend song and all of a sudden Aaliyah shows up, that's mm-hmm. a new artist to you. You just right, right. you don't have to pay ten dollars to to buy that album to yeah. hear this new art. So you can just click it and see if you like it or not. Right, absolutely. So like there is no age. So like these songs that are like forty years old are still working for me in the club because People have I access mean, to I that. I mean, uh, just the same thing. The cranberry thing. Stevie Nicks. Yeah, you know? yeah. Crazy. I played, I played, uh, what I play last night? Don't You Want Me Baby. And people were singing the words. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those kids weren't anything over 25 years old, but they knew it. They weren't alive. <laughs> no. <laughs> they weren't even sperm yet. <laughs> but it's like the accessibility of music you can't say that a certain generation wouldn't pay attention to it i bet right. you a lot of people are paying attention to the rolling stones right now because of charlie watts rest in peace rest yeah. in peace that was crazy i thought the yeah people were like a person from the rolling stone could actually die right <laughs> cuz you look at keith richards he's like a fucking maniac you yeah. know what i mean so it just the technology's great when it comes to older artists because they could you, people could fall down that rabbit hole now. Right. The suggestions are amazing. Yeah. I think we talked about this before how like Quest Love like tries to listen to a hundred new songs a day. Couldn't do that before. No way. So it's amazing and you find all these amazing things. That's why it's a little bit more difficult to DJ nowadays because you have instead of just having to have the new shit, people right. are just venturing out and finding these Agreed. and not even that, but like now you have these you the the SoundCloud rappers that are like hidden in Spotify and people are like, Oh, this song's popping but it's half the you know, other half the club doesn't even know. Right, right, so right, it's right, very exactly. difficult because now you have so much access to so many different kinds of music, mm-hmm. it's hard to harness all that in. Yeah. But it's good for expansion of music. I love it. It is, man. And on that note, yeah, man. what an episode. I love that. Yeah, that yeah. was good talk, good man. Talk. Awesome. Uh, awesome. So you can find us at, I'm a promoter, he's the DJ. That's me. Follow us on Instagram. Jeff London underscore. Yes, sir. Mine's Jason Smith Music. Check us out. We got a lot of shit going on. Episode Come party with us. Next we week. are thankful for you guys so much. Big and, time. and we love seeing you and hearing from y'all. Y'all be good, man. Peace. Peace. Jeff London, DJ Jason Smith.